The KZ-ZS10 Pro is a 10-unit hybrid earphone, combining a single dynamic driver and four balance armatures per ear. I purchased these for around 50 bucks New Zealand on AliExpress. The KZ website calls them an earphone, while the official KZ store on AliExpress says they're also an in-ear monitor. In that case, I'll compare these to the Shure SC215, which is considered an entry-level in-ear monitor at around 229 New Zealand dollars, available at your local music stores. The ZS10 Pro has a simple box design, and weirdly has a black and white picture. The cheaper models from KZ sported some coloured packaging, so I found this a bit weird to have black and white packaging for this one. I had already opened these before starting my channel, and they originally had a better presentation than what you see in the box. There's a left and right earphone, three pairs of interchangeable ear tip sizes, and a brown copper cable, which ended up being faulty. I'll talk about that shortly. The Shure SE215 also came with three pairs of silicone ear tip sizes, but also an additional three pair of foam ear tip sizes and a small carry case. The ZS10 Pro comes in a variety of colors and finishes. The one I purchased showcases a stylish metal cover with gold textures. I won't lie, they look very classy and expensive up close. The ZS10 Pro has no competition in terms of looks or design when compared to the SE215, which I found had a simple and uninteresting design. Both feature a translucent housing where the drivers and armatures sit. The SE215 is smaller and lighter than the ZS10 Pro. It feels sort of cheap when seen side by side like this. The ZS10 Pro is heavier and has a more solid build. The SC215 and the ZS10 Pro both have detachable cables and immediately the SC215 wins because KZ sent me a faulty cable where only one side worked. The KZ cable is around 110cm in length and is their stock standard copper cable feeling cheap and kind of flimsy. The SC215 has a much better build, it feels like a quality cable and is longer at around 115cm in length. Now, luckily I just so happened to have purchased a spare silver KZ upgrade cable, so I ended up using that instead of the broken copper cable for this review. I'm still trying to get a replacement cable for this broken one that they supplied. Let's just say the customer service experience is not all that reliable or enjoyable. I did find it strange that a cheaper pair of KZ earphones under 35 New Zealand dollars comes with a so-called silver upgrade cable, while these ZS10 Pro and my ZSX earphones came with their stock copper cable. The SE215 uses a single dynamic driver per ear covering all frequencies. The ZS10 Pro has a single 10mm double magnetic dynamic driver for the lows pair of balance armatures for the mids, and two more individually placed balance armatures for the high frequencies. The SC215 sits inside the ear really nicely, flush with my ears. They both feel equally snug in the ears, but the ZS10 Pro is let down by one design flaw. Aside from the Gucci looking aesthetic, they may look great, but the ZS10 Pro do not feel good. Like I said, they feel snug in the ear, but it's the front plate that makes it so uncomfortable with the sharp metal edges. It's itchy, scratchy, and feels like it could cut into my ear. If I make a movement that causes the earphone to shift slightly, I feel the edges scratch over my ear and it's really unpleasant. The SC215 wins in terms of comfort and feel. When listening to the same playlist for both earphones, I often have to turn the volume down for the ZS10 Pro as they have more volume output than the SC215. Both earphones sound great with mid-range instruments such as vocals, guitars and piano. The ZS10 Pro and the SC215 sound pretty well balanced across all the frequencies. Consistent and pleasant. However, the lows in the ZS10 Pro sound tighter and punchier, but not in an overpowering way. The ZS10 Pro is also a little more crisper in the mids and highs, but still maintains a balanced range of frequencies. As mentioned before, the SC215 has a balanced sound across all frequencies, but immediate comparison to the ZS10 Pro, they sound a bit thinner and just not as exciting. Apart from the annoyingly supplied broken cable and the razor blade edges of the earphones, the ZS10 Pro still sounds pretty good. If you can get used to the feeling of having a knife rub against your ear, 
and KZ ZX10 Pro is a great sounding earphone for just under the quarter of a price of a Shure SE215. I however would not use these in-ear monitors, they're too uncomfortable for my taste. Maybe my ears are too small, maybe they are better suited for bigger ears, I don't know. Overall they sound great with a flat consistent sound but unbearably painful to wear for long periods. Thanks for watching.